Come on. Oh, damn it! Survival is not a game for extreme adventurers. In fact, having to survive here in the deep Amazon jungle nowadays is more likely for the average person, like a father and son who simply embark on a journey to take some pictures of the jungle. Here amongst the jaguar and the deadly Fertilant snake, tourism of all kinds ensures that for years to come, the average person will find themselves in places like the Amazon jungle, having to survive. You know, wilderness survival has become a theater of entertainment. The reality is much, much different. Real people suffer horrific survival ordeals and not in the name of fun. A father and son head deep into the Ecuadorian jungle on a simple photography expedition, and their guide fails to return to pick them up. Now, that's a real survival situation. How Logan and I will fare in this scenario is entirely up to our luck, our skill set, or lack of, our supplies, or lack of, our fitness level, and our wills. Every year, hundreds of people end up in a survival situation. But what's the next best move once you know you're in it? Logan and I were in it within minutes of being dropped off on this remote stretch of Jungle River in Ecuador. Rain that will come to dominate our every move comes quickly. We didn't come here for survival. We came here for a photography shoot. At least that's how we set ourselves up. Imitating real life, we brought in what any father and son team might. We each had one of those little wristband survival kits, a tarp for rain while Logan took his pictures, and in a last minute suggestion, I threw in a small jungle hammock for us each. All right, so you want to shoot it out wide, use some rocks. Here, I'll work with you. If you plan on being out for only a few hours, but your pickup never arrives, what happens next? This is the exact scenario where the apprehension really kicks in. I mean, I'm out here with Logan and uh, ostensibly on a photography expedition. Where's our pickup? Where's our, where's our ride home? So in this scenario, it's obvious that we wouldn't be building shelters. I mean, who wants to go up into there, right? Up into the jungle. I mean, you can see how thick it is up in there. And so we're out on this sort of pebble beach here. Seemingly a nice, open, safe place to be. But in fact, what we've got to worry about the most, Logan, is the water coming up. And I think having our tarp right here, looking this way, is the best place because we can kind of watch it. If we were on the other side, down at the bottom end of this pebble beach, and the water's coming up, we might not notice it. Worst case scenario, we can go up into that jungle there. I can see it goes up and it'll be a scramble and it won't be pretty, but at least we'll get away from the rushing water. The rivers here can come up in less than an hour. Feet, feet, feet. In an hour or three, you could have a 10 foot rise in this river. It, it's been raining off and on on us, which is why we've got the tarp laid out here. Further up there in the hills, if there's a lot of rain, it's gonna come down this river, right onto Logan and I. I don't know if we're gonna try to sleep in spells. It's gonna be hard to sleep anyway. The other thing that Logan and I aren't going to do is get a fire going, and the reason for that is I want to follow in those footsteps of what most people would do, and they wouldn't think to get a fire going, and, and by the time you think, oh my, oh my gosh, we, we, we need a fire, the sun sets, and indeed, the sun is about to set, so here we go. This is how it really happens. You're never prepared for actual survival. You're never prepared for your own guide not to show up. You're prepared only for the few hours you expect to enjoy an adventurous trek. But since my dad seemed pretty concerned about the water rising, I figure why not mark its height now so we can notice if it's rising at all. Survival will take both of us thinking things through, not just my dad. So Logan's got this idea of piling up some rocks right at the water's edge so to, that if this water level starts to rise, we'll make sure that the rocks are distinctive and then we can check the level and hopefully notice that it's staying put or even receding would be better. 
With no food in our stomachs, this begins the energy level countdown as we burn calories constantly through stress and activity without replacing them with food. I like being out in the open. I like that we're out here in terms of the bugs, creepy crawly snakes, jaguar, all of that, but I don't like being by this kind of river in the jungle because water can rise within minutes, really. In a half an hour, you can be up a couple of feet washing all of this away and us with it. Now, this is just that time of day you're constantly saying, oh, it's got to be coming. It should be coming any moment now. And you start, you start watching, whether it be a road or, in this case, a larger river. You just keep watching, watching, watching. It's got to show up sooner or later. And it can lead to a lot of just apprehension and nervousness. And you just, well, it's easy to panic. It's easy to freak out. Come down here to the sand and maybe see some jaguar tracks. It sort of adds to the panic. But I don't see any just yet. Logan's actually gone off into the jungle to see what's going on up there. He was in the mood. He said, I want to climb up into there and see what's going on. Logan's youthful energy for exploring the immediate area is a huge payoff for me not being alone out here. Without even realizing it, he's accomplishing a zone of assessment check. What do we have further into the jungle? It's his natural survival instinct kicking in. Okay, Dad, so I'm gonna go check those rocks and see if uh, the water's advanced at all. Okay. How do you know the water's up? So, I was just saying when, um, when we put the rock down, yeah. the water was like in front of it, and now it's two feet past. Oh, you're right. Uh-oh. This isn't good. I mean, I know it's getting dark. You think we should just go to that little spot you found? Or is it gnarly up there? It's be a little bit of a buggy sleep. What I hate about a situation like this is Logan may or may not realize just how dangerous this is. And it's my son, so I'm a lot more nervous than I normally would be. There are a few elements of the wilderness I will not underestimate. Heavy winds and powerful water are two of them. And as exposed as we are out on the gravel bar, I want to see the spot in the jungle that Logan found in his recon mission. Maybe it can serve as plan B if we have to move. Oh yeah, I see. Even here it could get washed out if you look at it. I mean, it is five, six feet above the river. Yeah, it's about five, six feet up, but you can see how it's been, it's been deep enough here to come up here and wash out, see all the mud and sand. It's gonna depend on how bad it gets. All of this makes me nervous right now. Feeling like we might have to do something in the middle of the night is, uh, I hate that feeling. It's not good. You can almost handle anything during the day, but when stuff happens at night, very dangerous. Especially in the Amazon jungle. With the water rising fast, we've made a quick decision to move camp in the dark. In survival, those who hesitate are lost and probably dead. All right, this is gonna be nasty, but well, we'll be all right getting across now. Better now than when it's a bit deeper. I suggest just walk slowly right behind me and I won't take you anywhere deep, okay? Logan's boots are four inches shorter than mine, and even that little disadvantage can matter in survival. Let me know if you need me to slow down. Deep here, but not so bad. You should be fine. It's coming up though, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's more just the water that's splashing up with the resistance. Yep, I can feel it already. Yeah, but the water feels stronger than it did before. Uh, okay, down this way, down this way. Shallower. All right, you know what? Before it starts raining, let's get the hammocks off. I've always said there's no forgiveness time for survival when it's terribly cold. In the jungle, it's the rain. 
either prepare for it or get caught in it. We didn't even have time to properly set up our little nylon tube hammocks to escape the torrential downpours that will last all night long. Oh man, it's raining so hard right now that my uh, tarp actually felt came flying down and I got just poured on. And now I've got to kind of sit up and hold, hold myself together under this tiny little tarp that's pouring up though. can rain in the jungle as a torrential downpour for 20 straight hours. Trust me on this matter. We would be spared that, however, as it only lasted 13 hours for us. But now we're trapped against the jungle canopy. River's in, uh, well, it's not in full flood, but it's, it's up quite a bit. I mean, the water's, you know, that water was back down. I would say it's come up, uh, I'm gonna give it two feet. Oh, God. That was brutal. So, where we were is up there, is underwater now. So, moving is the only thing that uh, made sense last night. It was a little gnarly, but it was a much better night. That would have been, we would have been washed out. And this is where. Like I say, sometimes the survival kit makes all the difference in the world, but more importantly, it's what you put in that survival kit. Whether or not it's something that pertains to where you're going, season, activity, all of that. So that last minute decision to throw in a couple of uh, small hammocks, seems everything. For the sake of a pound of weight, this one little survival kit item is a lifesaver. Eliminating the need for gnarly jungle shelters, crawling with ants, possessing a painful bite and stink. But we're not safe yet. We need to cut deeper into the jungle and get ourselves a few more feet higher up in case the river keeps rising. The last time I was in the Amazon jungle, the river I was beside rose 15 feet in a matter of hours. But this activity of cutting trees is how we open ourselves up to injuries. Ow! Ah, oh, shoot. Stinging nettle. That's gonna burn. So here's the uh, the culprit. And so I was just asking which it was, so we can look out for it too. And uh, yeah, I got a good burn happening on the hand and wrist right now. Two can work so much more effectively than one. So we both work together to move camp quickly before the waters rise anymore. There's no room for ego or laziness in group survival. Logan, once again, has the energy of youth on his side. And he convinces me to start cutting a trail into the jungle to see if we can get to a better part of the river. So we've cut a little bit of a trail here already, working our way through. By the way, I lost this machete for a little while, so I've tied, got some rope there that's brightly colored, and I've tied it on. Got a saying in survival, if you're Knife's not in your sheath, it's in your hand. If it's not in your hand, it's in your sheath. We're gonna have to look up a lot here. Potential for snakes to fall down, or even just spiders, is much. No matter how hot and humid it is, we have to wear enough clothing to protect ourselves from the spiders and the ants. Look straight through, you're on the right track now. This area of the jungle is known for the massive, yet non-poisonous, boa constrictor snake. That's what I don't want to happen. Let's make some uh, blazes on the trees here. Let's do a couple of these kinds of things. Kick your feet in the mud as well to mark a trail that way. Is it through here? Yeah. You're right. That's somebody's, uh, that's somebody's shelter. Look at the cut marks. If not for Logan walking down yesterday, we wouldn't have found that dry patch that saved us last night. 
And they're not for Logan pushing the issue, saying, let's go and do this bushwhack to see if we can get across the water. We wouldn't have found this, which I think might even be an old, old, old trail. I'm seeing uh, the odd cut mark. Wow, how much it opens up here. That's good. Problem is knowing where that is, but this has got me tempted for tomorrow. What do you think? Maybe. One more loop and then hard left? Sure. Or through here? It's up to you. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's a guess no matter what. Well, here we are at the other river. The water's up, but that doesn't mean it's up too much for fishing. Do some hand fishing under all of these rocks. So the idea here is there's a small silver fish that hides out under the rocks in this river here. And uh, we're losing energy, so we could do about, do with about a dozen of them. We know about these fish because of some simple pre-trip researching. Research is a vital component to surviving any ordeal. Sometimes knowing only one thing, one plant you can eat, one fish you can catch, one way you can make a shelter or travel might be the one thing that keeps you alive. Jungle takes it out of me. Ah, it's time to pull it in tonight. In the heat and the rain and a little bit of work and zero food, it starts slowing down. Try and pick it up tomorrow and hopefully catch some fish. I'll work on the fire, they'll work on catching fish. Two things we both like to do. This too is part of surviving as a team, specializing in the things you're good at. The right person for the right job is the best practice for survival. Logan's crawled into the jungle hammock and the water was going down, 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 looking so promising. And then in the last 15 minutes, it's come back up another foot again. So it's anybody's guess as to what it's going to be like when we wake up in the morning. But got through another day. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We're into our third day of Amazon jungle survival. And my son Logan and I are frustrated by how much the rising river has trapped us into one little spot in the jungle. Entrapment by these natural elements limits our survival possibilities. All right, so this is good news. In spite of the rain, the water's not only come down, it's come way down. I'm sh pretty sure Logan can walk across that. We'll keep the trail open and we'll mark it just the same because it can come back up. Within the next two hours, we could be right back up to the banks again. But one of the main things that I want to do is get a fire going now. And this means I can come down here. And even though all of this firewood here, even though it's been under the water on several occasions, it's also high and dry up in the air uh, every time it is dry or sunny, unlike everything in the bush, which is so green. So this is actually the wood that I want to get because I believe I could split into the inside of it and I'll have some dry firewood. It's not normal for me to have a whole roll of duct tape as part of my survival kit. I always have some duct tape, but not a whole roll. Got a whole roll this time because we were doing photography work and we can set up various mounts using the duct tape, tying things to trees, that sort of thing. But uh, I think it's gonna come into use for a couple of ideas that I can affect today to help us out both in catching fish, trail marking, and uh, fire starting. this way. It's another thought occurred to me in a situation like this is that 
Another thing that would be happening would be anger. You know, you'd be out here and part of you would be hoping nothing was wrong way, way back at base camp, but you'd also be very, very angry if somebody just messed up and that's why you weren't picked up. And so as a father, you, you know, to, to think about how much anger would be, extra anger would be inside you because you've got your son with you and that would color your judgment on what you should be doing. And that anger can also lead to panic. What do you think? Water's way, way down. I think you can even get across there now. But we've got the trail. We'll mark the trail just the same so we've got it. I want to blaze it a little better. As long as it doesn't come up quickly in the next couple hours, I'm going to be a little bit home free for going over there to get firewood. And I think that's what I'd like to concentrate on. And you can concentrate on getting up there to fish. We wore two survival bracelets that were old and soaked by the rain, leaving them mostly useless. Like we need a dozen pieces like this. And we'll hopefully turn this into a, a fish bucket. But I had a roll of tape with my camera gear and we can use it for survival instead. My dad had a great idea for making a container to keep any fish I catch. Containers and ropes are constantly used in survival. Okay. And the other one is gonna go opposite. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yep. Now we gotta meet at the bottom yep. and make them all match up at the top. All right, now we're gonna do... Do you want a vlog? Oh, sure. Let's do one more. Okay. Survival is best when you can mix up primitive technology with modern technology. The basket style is thousands of years old. The tape, Definitely not so much. Pretty. Just has to work. And we're gonna go all the way around the whole thing and make a, make a globe. That was an ant on the camera. This is the very kind of activity that not only conserves calories, but also serves to calm us down, and keep our minds focused on what we can do to better survive. And you never know, the work might just pay off. Whether it's making small traps or bettering your shelter, it helps if you stay proactive. What do you think? You fine? Here we go. Logan's got himself a basket for fish but he'll still need fishing line. I think we might need to work together to get this thread apart. We can work a lot faster. Oh, that's working really well. This again is a big advantage of having two people when you have to survive. Little tasks like this become much more doable. Do them a lot faster. That's why culture develops. You can't survive out here alone. Not long term. Everything in our little survival bracelets was destroyed by age, except for two little fishing hooks and the cord itself, which can become a desperately needed fishing line. So we've basically taken one small thin thread and broke it apart into three, three separate lines, which now Logan can use for fishing to get a longer reach. All right. This is my field of firewood. I know it seems crazy because it's always under the water, but it's also high and dry at times like this. I'm hoping that it's brittle and dry inside. You can kind of tell by the weight of things whether or not they're waterlogged. Super heavy, no good. Nice and light, might just work. But in the jungle, the dampness permeates everything. Got another soaker. Okay, so my dad asked me to make uh, two spears just in case of jaguar. Personally, I don't think it's that big of an issue, but clearly he does, so I'm gonna try to make one out of a piece of wood here.
I can see like my dad's point in why he wants the spears made to protect against jaguar and puma, but in reality, if you're getting attacked by a jaguar or a puma, the spear's not going to do much more than spare you a couple seconds before it kills you. I mean, obviously, it's a jaguar, it's a puma, it's not out to kill you. You know, it's the same with like sharks. I mean, people are always scared of sharks and they think, oh, you know, they can smell your blood from miles and miles away and they're out to kill you. And if you're in the water with a shark, it's going to bite you. It doesn't actually happen like that. I mean, as long as you're not being stupid and you're being careful, it's most likely not going to do anything. Okay, here is the finished spear. Notches on the top, sharp peak, long body. Perfect for uh, fending off Jaguar. Logan and I split our efforts at surviving in the Amazon jungle. He concentrates on trying for fish, while I busy myself with the hope of getting a fire going. Something I've never failed at, even under the toughest conditions. And while I search for wood, I find something that can help Logan instead. Ha. Huh. Hey, Logan, look what I found. So, if it were me, I'd put my hand in it like this, and you wrap it around, and then when you go to throw it, it spools off the end. So this will work really well for you if you want to try to use this instead. As Logan's confidence grows, he forgets to trust my survival experience, and in spite of my convincing talk, he decides to go his own way towards making a fishing rod. I don't agree with him. But I also don't want to create conflict where there isn't any, yet. Okay, so I'm just going to tie it to the end of this one. It should be bendy enough to hold the fish without breaking. I'm going to tie it to the top. I'm also going to give extra length in case the stick does snap. I can still hold onto the rope. There we go. That's not going anywhere. Got my safety in place. Rope attached to the end. There's my fishing pole. Logan's headed off fishing. What I want to do here is mark up our trail a little bit better so we don't get turned around. We got a little turn around coming back through the jungle here. Not uh, too difficult to understand why. And so I want to mark it a little better. And I thought, you know what? Other than blazing all the trees, which we're doing, I can do this too. Okay, so the plan is to go up to the river, try to hand catch some fish, and when I do, bring the fish back to the fishing rod that I made, and use it to try to catch a bigger fish. Actually, this is a good spot to tape right here, because it looks like a trail going through here. It's easy for us to kind of get off the mark. We have to turn right. It's a sharp right turn here. So this is the kind of corner where you want to double mark it. So you know, oh, two marks beside each other, this is where we do our right turn. Or a turn, even if you forget which way to turn, there's going to be a turn to make. And because I've got the tape, I'll mark this one up with double tape. And never do that anywhere else again unless it means you're making a hard turn. You always have to make that distinction when a trail starts to meander into a different direction. Make sure your markings are distinct as well. So my dad was talking about this river was the best one for fishing, but I don't think he knows what he's talking about because it's way too shallow for any of the fish to get under the rocks. Huh. This tree's covered in leaf cutter ants. Sorry guys, I'm going to ruin your highway. Yep, they've, they've lost the pheromone trail. Got a little bit of a pile up on the highway here. Why is it I feel bad all of a sudden? Like I just disrupted an entire universe there. They'll figure it out. They don't look like they're figuring it out. Walk over the tape, boys. Okay, seriously, I feel guilty. There.
Okay, so there's been absolutely no luck with uh, getting fish under the rocks. And it's starting to rain now, so I gotta get this camera covered. So, what I'm gonna do is try to find some tadpoles in one of the smaller pools by our old camp and use them. Uh oh. Oh no. I think rain's coming. Hard. Yep, rain's coming down. Guess that was only a matter of time. I'm gonna head back to camp as fast as I can here. And I can go fast now because the tape is marking my way really well. Taking all the guesswork out of every corner, every twist and turn. Here's my double tape. I know I gotta go this way. Perfect. Looks like a charm. Once again, the energy of youth spurs me on to be more proactive. Logan wants to keep fishing in the rain rather than hide out under the tarp with me. So I figure I should get out here with him, see how I can help. Yeah, that Logan out doing me here, he's gonna get out in the rain. I will too. Oh yeah, good idea. That makes for an easier bait. Tadpoles and an obvious bait too. Okay, so finally got this all raveled up. So it's perfect, ready to go. Only have two hooks, so hopefully I don't screw this up. And it's pouring rain right now, which sucks. Might make better fishing though. I'll just try fishing down here. I actually don't agree with this little fishing location, but who am I to say? I mean, I could say don't fish down here, and maybe this is where they all are. At least he's out there trying. It's tricky with teenage boys. The survival situation, everything's different than it is at home. Any parent of a teenage son knows they have no energy when you need them to have energy, and lots of energy when you don't want them to have energy. I'm having trouble finding a spot that's not going to get me snagged. What about those uh, palmer pools that we were looking at? There's nothing in there. How do you know? Because you can look at them. But you won't get snagged at least, right? Yeah, but you're not going to catch anything. Well, okay, but I mean, it should be worth a try today anyway. What are you going to do? I'm going to walk up there and see if there's a spot. There's too many sticks over here. In my experience, I can't believe this is going to work. The water is too fast and muddy for a little bit of string, a tiny hook, and a tadpole. So, maybe you can see it's not so easy when you don't have real fishing gear. Everybody likes to go on about, oh, when I was a kid, I grew up with a string and a stick and finishing off my grandmother's bridge and catching catfish. Yeah, you can come on out and try it in a survival situation makeshift lines and little tiny hooks and can't get to the really good spots. It's just, it's just not so easy. It's rival fishing and real fishing are two different things. And even in real fishing, people get skunked all the time. The difference with survival is your life depends upon it. So getting skunked sucks. We continue to have bad luck with catching any fish. But the water is down finally, so finding out what else is around the corner becomes paramount to effecting good survival. All right, while we have time, we're gonna bust a move up the river for two reasons. One, to try some more hand fishing. And two, for me, I just wanna explore and see what's up river. The thing about this type of fishing is, we know about it because before we came in here, we asked. It's how we know that there are some edible plants back there that we can make use of tonight. And to me, any adventure should be started with some kind of knowledge already acquired so you know what you're getting yourself into. Knowing how to get these small fish out of these rocks, it will be because we asked ahead of time. And knowing those little things about an area that pertain to survival are vital, even if you're just here on a photography expedition and you expect to go home that night. Because what you expect and what might happen could be two completely different things. 
It doesn't really matter how hot it is in the jungle. Once you're soaked to the bone, you chill down quickly. Here comes the rain. Still trying. Gotta hand it to him. When it comes to fishing, he's persistent. Well, those trees we can eat are at least a sure thing. So, I'm gonna go cut those down. Because uh, we're pretty lightheaded. We are uh, in terms of how many hours we've been without food. It's gotta be around 60, 70. And we're still putting out a lot of energy. So. It shows you, even with huge advantage of having a tarp, a couple of jungle hammocks, it's a great nighttime advantage, but it doesn't put food in our stomachs. Let's get out of this rain and dry off. Chop down some of those trees and get some food, however meager, into our bodies. That's it, isn't it? That's, yeah. Tastes kind of like celery. Okay, good. I'll cut up some more and get it all fresh. Make us like a meal for tonight. The amount of rain we've been receiving, this is not going to be easy. Water's coming up again? Yeah, so. Figures. Get rid of all the wet bark first. Get down to what I hope is dry wood. It's not just the dampness in the wood, it's the dampness in the air. That matters too. And even just trying to see if the inside wood is damp is possible because my hands are wet. I don't have anything to dry with, even my clothing is all damp, so. If I angle, angle this down a little more like this, the shavings tend to fall more onto the pile than flying all over the place. If I do it like this, they kind of fly all over. To my angle down, it's a little better. You need to take a break? Can you do me a favor while you take a break? Can you give me uh, maybe like a, just a, um, three golf ball sized little bundles of just bundled up duct tape, like just a, a mess of duct tape? Would have been nice to catch some fish. What I like to do is carve these down to these fine shavings, but then always leave the last piece like a pencil stick, because then, then you've got the next layer of kindling. Can't tell if it's wet or dry. It's starting to rain, isn't it? Shoot. The dampness permeates everything, especially the matches that came inside the survival bracelets. So we've got these five little matches, this pathetic little striker, and tape. And I want to Light the tape, because it should hold the flame really well. Let's see if I can get things going from there. Oh boy. Nope, not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. The matches are too moist. They're just falling apart. Yep, they're like mush. All right, plan B, the flint striker. Now I gotta move quickly, because it's getting dark on us. I'm gonna shave off tiny shavings of this magnesium. And I'll use these match heads just the same. I'll mix them in, because they may still ignite. And what I wanna do is uh, make a kind of little box to catch the shavings. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but I'll give it a try here. The hardest part of this is always just getting these shavings. And you need a big pile. 
So this is gonna take a little while. Hang in there. I've got a bad feeling about what I'm going to attempt, even using my trusty flint striker. I waited too long. I should have checked all of this out while I had lots of daylight. And my hope is that I can get the tape to ignite when I hopefully ignite the magnesium shavings with a spark. Mm. Come on, baby. Magnesium is not catching. There's just not enough of it. Some of it's already burned up. Let's try this again. I don't think it's gonna work now, though. The magnesium shavings have thinned out, and I'm running out of steam. It's been two hours just concentrating on this, not including the splitting and gathering of firewood. Come on, man. Man, oh man. Oh, I would kill for some dry grass right about now. Logan, I don't think we're getting this fire going. No? No. Not worth keep trying, or? Oh, man. It's, I mean, just trying to gouge all of the magnesium off of this bar is really exhausting. I'm sweating doing this. It's getting dark. What I have to do is I have to sit down. I've done this before, but it takes me, like I spend a, a good 45 minutes to an hour just getting the pile of shavings and keeping them out of the wind. And uh, yeah, this ain't happening. I can't let this beat me. I've never let a fire beat me. One way, somehow, I'll get it going. Rain or shine, jungle or desert, forest or arctic, I pride myself on always being able to get a fire going. These are... I can't give up yet. Just my little hand notes of all the stuff that we've been filming. But even this paper is damp. Still, might be able to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. Even this is a, it's all too damp. Some of my old tricks are letting me down. Damn. While it drips on me right now. <laughs> all right, we're out for photography expedition, brought some toilet paper. Let's try this now. Come on. Uh oh. No. Oh no. The tape didn't catch. Is it that damp? You gotta be kidding me. We had flame, dude. I know, I saw. It's raining again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I can feel the rain on my back. Let me go again. 
Logan, I need your help. Rip off a piece of duct tape, dangle it in the flame, get it burning. Get it burning, whatever you do. Just get it right in there. It doesn't want to burn at all. I know, I know, I know. Everything is so wet. Ah, uh, it's gone, isn't it? I think so. That's disappointing. Even Survivor Man can have a bad day when it comes to getting a fire going. And here comes the rain. I'm not one to give up. And yet again, I get a small flame. And this time, the tape is burning too. All right. Come on. Oh, damn it! You gotta be kidding me! Oh! Oh, man. All right. As you saw, a big gush of water just fell off of the tarp up above, square onto the entire pile of kindling and what was once flame. No words. It's been years of doing survival. Thousands of fires, harsh weather, difficult circumstances. Rain, snow, wind, cold, hot. So this, this really bites. Always give yourself every advantage possible if adventure is your goal. A survival ordeal doesn't happen by accident. It occurs because you didn't prepare, or you ignored the signs of danger, or you shunned having some basic knowledge. It's not the extreme athletes and high-risk adventures who end up in survival situations. It's families, friends, mothers and children, fathers and sons. If you want to continue on this journey with me, go to oln.ca.